What up, everybody? Scuffy here. And just shortly from now, I'm going to be doing my first games in the uh, U.S. qualifier, U.S.-Mexico qualifier for Team USA for the World Cup. Um, World Cup, I've been talking about that for a while. It's finally here. We're doing the qualifiers this month. Hopefully, I get... I get to keep going on. It's actually double elimination, so even if I lose this round, I'll still be playing at least one more round. Um, kind of break down the brackets. So for the World Cup, for the U.S. North American uh, uh, gathering, as it were, I believe we had uh, two. It's like we had nine players sign up to play. So. My first round, I'm facing off against, against Zacharias, uh, and then the winner of our match will go on to face Phil Phil C 2019. Um, the loser will go to face Mando the Mad. Mando the Mad's already had his game. Uh, he lost against uh, Draconic Slayer or Diamond, um, as he's on the Discord, uh, who then lost against Number One. Uh, number One is one of those players you should recognize the name. I think actually, if you go. I wouldn't be surprised if he's up here. Some of these, not all these players, but some of these players are going to be playing in the World Cup. So I know Steve is playing in the qualifiers. Um, I imagine Wintermall is. Look, Fulgrim is playing for Team Australia, if I remember correctly. I hope, I hope I got that right. Um, Constantine Valdor, I believe, is Germany. And, uh, Philip? No, that's up for my Ironclad. That's the wrong Phil. Um, wow, he's hitting. That's one of our guys. Good job, Phil. Keep going, man. Um, all right. So, yeah, so, I don't know. I'm going to keep covering World Cup as it goes. Uh, whether I make it beyond this round to the next round or not. But this World Cup is a little bit different. Normal tournaments, conquest format. So you have two warlords from two different factions, and you have to win with both of those. It's an evolved best two out of three. This particular World Cup, the rules are it's still best two out of three, but each player actually has three warlords. So there's a curveball. So you are not guaranteed to know what you're going to face, which actually makes it very interesting and kind of fun uh, when you're squaring off against your opponent. So sometimes there are certain matchups, like for instance, when you're playing... Uh, when you're playing a tournament, especially a long-standing tournament, and there are certain factions like the Raven Guard or uh, Night Lords, Kurs, you know that your opponent has got those Warlords. You just pack extra anti-stealth, direct damage, high damage, whatever it is that's going to counter that Warlord specifically. But when you're playing with three, and you're going to face two out of the three, you don't have to face that third one. That really lends itself to a curveball you might prep for one and not see it in the course of any of the games that you play if your opponent chooses to keep it that way so my warlord choices now and this is just for the qualifiers the qualifiers will not have the same warlords or don't need to have the same warlords going into the main tournament but for the qualifiers i chose three warlords that i feel are pretty flexible not just in terms of how they respond in the game, but also in terms of deck options. You can build them a variety of ways. You're not set with one particular build, and you have to hope that's really good. So that's really my strategy. I picked solid Warlords that I felt I'm comfortable with, that have flexibility, and went from there. Now, I always enjoy playing Salt Harvits, so I, it's an easy enough fix for me. It's been a long time since I've played him because... I'm I'm confident. I'm comfortable where he's at. The last time I played him was Lodge Wars 3. Yeah, Lodge Wars 3. No, yeah, Lodge Wars 3. Um, but the strategy has always remained the same. And, you know, I've gone on to do other things. Um, feel good about Salt. You can build him a variety of ways. You can build him Classic. You can build him Desperate Defense. Uh, you could build damage if you want to. But really, he's going to be putting out high-cost troops sooner than later it's, there's nothing wrong with that he's got low health to make up for it so not every match is going to be in his favor but as long as he's dropping when he needs to drop he's going to be good loyalists going into that i've got the dark angels i went with corswain corswain is just a good performer 
um, improving with him dramatically as I got all of the Dark Angels cards, so that helps a lot. But uh, particularly finding the way I, I play with him. Uh, he, he works. His lethal range gets bigger the longer the game goes, which is nice to know. Um, but also, the Dark Angels are very flexible between Ravenwing and Deathwing. Dreadwing, meh, not so much, but they give you some options, and they've got some solid tactics as well as uh, troops that just pump out some stuff. So I like I like the support that they've got. I like the way that they can garner uh, steam and momentum. I think Corswain out of the four of them is the most who can who really take advantage of gaps late game, whereas Red Loss I, I enjoy, um, but he can't capitalize in the same way that Corswain can. And Nemuel could falter and have a slow start. Johnson is just not there, so let's not even go in that category. And then I went back to the trader pool, went for a Primarch because I felt I needed one. I dove into the Iron Warriors and went with Perturabo. Perturabo is another one that is performing well. He performs well. He's just always consistent. His ability is just going to deal lots of damage. You can get a very big lethal window early on in a uh, or that seven energy basically in a game and the iron warriors have so many ways to play with per travel. you can go with troops you've got some solid answers to troops out there and maybe work your way into a reckoning if you want to you can just dish out lots of tactics with damage and high damage and healing and then get into that lethal range for the contrador uh rack and ruin viral bombs whatever you want to go you could even combo with Tyranthicus Veterans and the uh, oh Harsh Discipline. There's a lot of ways to go there. You can even mix the two styles and actually end up with like a hybrid, not necessarily a mid-range deck, but very solid build. And the fact that Perturabo's ability lends itself to either being aggressive or uh, control is nice. Um, doing okay. Doing okay with Perturabo. So... Overall, those are the three that I went with this particular qualifier. So we're going to play with all three of them. My first opponent is Zacharias. Um, is it Zacharias? Zacharias? I think Zacharias. Um, so we're going to have some fun. We're going to play best two out of three. I'm curious to see who he's bringing. He's got Kinza, Karn, and Fulgrim as his Warlord choices. Um, so I don't know which of those two I will face. Or if I'll face all three, depending on how things go, we will see here shortly. So uh, stay tuned. Wish me luck. And if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please do so. Or like the videos, share, recommend. I'm trying to hit 800 subs by the end of, uh, by the end of summer 2021. And so far we're getting there. But I need your guys' help to break the YouTube algorithm. Because it is a tricky finicky beast the youtube algorithm and uh it's it's more complicated than the the shadows and spirals of the warp it is more tumultuous and unpredictable than the tacholka engine um it is the youtube algorithm so any help i can get from the community out there i appreciate it your likes your comments they all help the channel they help me figure out uh, what what people would like to see and helps me know that I'm that I'm making stuff that are that is worth watching. So we will let Zakyrus know that we're on and ready and uh wish me luck. Okay. Alright, here we go. Round one. Okay. This is gonna be tricky tricks. Jubok is good, Acetin is good. I like Rilinor, but wanna go hard. I need some tactics. I'm going second here, so this is going to be tricky. If I can get some tactical brilliance, that would be ideal. I know that I have a feeling I know what he's he's trying to do the same thing I'm doing, to be honest with you. So I've got to hit hard. I need tactical brilliance early. And I need big stuff on the board fast. Stuff to throw off his momentum, stuff to draw out his his uh, his heat, as it were. Very nice, very nice. Mm -hmm. That is a strong card to play, but and I cannot I cannot let the Hall of Rights stick. I'll tell you that Hall of Rights turn one with Saul is really good. Uh, 
That's what we want. Sardarian's coming out next turn. I'm feeling good about this. If I can stick Sardarian, I'll feel much, much better. Ooh, nicely done. Okay, I can't stick Sardarian. So we'll do the next best thing. Drop an Agnuman, and we'll go from there. It was a very good stun, because otherwise Sardarian was going to come out. I can still hit Sardarian if I get another tactical brilliance. Um, okay. Let's see here. Let's go ahead and do... I don't like doing it this way, but... And if I can, I can run this into that and, and bash it or flank it. Gives me some options. Uh -huh. Wise choice, wise choice. I can hit him with the bikes. I can do five. I can, I can, I could do but then that's susceptible to a Melgator. I don't like that. I'd like supply lines with the jet bikes. I don't like it terribly. And at the same time, I think that's where I'm going to go. I'm going to keep him on the board. I'm going to hit pressure on Fulgrim. It's not great. I really would like to get my Sardarian out, but he could follow it up with another Perfections Flight. A second Sardarian. Okay. Okay, so the question then becomes do I bait out a Thedorian? He could hit that with no problem. This is gonna be a problem there. Huh? I can do I can take out one. Hmm. I'm not liking my hand here, guys. Okay. Alright, here's where we go. This is a little wonky. Bear with me. I don't like it. I don't like it. Would have liked to have used that. I know where he's going now. He's gonna get into the tanks. Yeah, he's hit the big stuff. Okay, all right, fair enough, fair enough. Okay, so then we hit with our eight. We can hit five and three. We can't hit any of these guys with their perfections, so it's going to be... God dang, that sucks. Five and four? Two and... No, it's got to be a five and four. It's got to be five and four. All right, well, hmm, what do we do? Three and five. Take him out, put pressure on. I'm going to take nine to the face. It's going to stun me again. Hmm. Understandable. That's a good move. Ooh, he's got two stuns. Ooh, nice. Nice. Very nice. Okay. What can I get here? Got nine. There's our two and our seven. There's a four and our seven. He's got 14 right there on that. Hmm, okay. If I take that out, that's five. I don't like it. I don't like any of it, to be honest with you. I don't like any of it. This is not good for me. Yeah, he should probably have a tactic to deal damage, and then that's going to be game. Unless I get, <laughs> unless I get something, yeah, good game. I uh, see so he's got the damage. All right, 
Fair enough, that's a strong opener. And he had the Sardarian before I got my Sardarian, which sucks. Alright, good game. Good game, we'll do that again. Let's add him to friends list for challenging. And let's go from there. Let's see if we can win the second game. He's got to win one more, so I'm either facing Kinza or I'm facing Karn at this point. I don't have to worry about facing Fulgrim. And it's Karn. Okay. Ooh, these are all good. Hall of Rights he can take out. Let's take that. I got Hall of Rights for turn one. Let's keep it. Ooh, that's going to be pinchy. Okay. Anything I'm putting down at hopefully is drawing heat away from my warlord. And if it's not, that's good. That's especially if he can get a good boost and he doesn't have breach. I'll feel all right. I'll feel all right. Okay. All right, I'll take that. Hmm, interesting. Okay, okay. Interesting. He's just pushing the lethal here. Okay. Hmm. Well. I wish I had something to capitalize on that. I don't. He's seven up on me, though. I don't like that. I think he realizes now that it, he's got to do something about that Hall of Rights. I need a... I need something. My draws are not going good for me this game, I'll tell you that. Yeah, he, if he's got a sweep in advance in his hand, that's game. He's up 11 on me, guys. Um... Okay, he can do... What is his ability? Two? Yeah, let's go ahead and do that. <laughs> this is how bad it is. This is really ugly. This is not looking good for me at all. I don't like it. I don't like it at all. This would have been great last game with Rilinor. That would have been really good. Ah, uh, come on, man. Really? What's he got? Mortar Strike? Of course. Nice. Can't fault him for that. And that's going to be game. There, unless I get a front line out, there's nothing I can do about that. Uh, right. Let's see what we got. Shoulda, woulda, coulda, right? Good game. Well, there's round two in the loser's bracket, shall we? Jeez Louise. That's just brutal. That's just brutal. That pisses me off. Those draws were terrible. But that's how we play, and that's why we're playing double elimination. So, good game, Zakyrus. Uh, good luck against Phil, and we'll see how that goes. We'll be following the bracket all the way through. So, that's it for me, guys, on this one. That was quick and short. Hopefully the next one won't be. Until next time. So, we're back again. I was actually planning on making it a little shorter. And it turned out that uh, the Masked Mando, or the Mad Mando, I added him here to my friends. He's my next opponent. He's online. Um, or he's going to be a Mando the Mad. He's going to be online and is up to play shortly. So, I figured let's just get our games done. Let's get him in. Um... He is playing, uh, for his Warlords, he's playing Astalin, Corswain, and Canis Vertex. Those are the three options. 
I'm gonna keep my I'm gonna keep my stead up. I'm gonna I'm gonna start with Saul. I'm gonna go with Big, although I have changed out based off of what he's got. Based off of the warlords that he's got. I made a couple minor changes. Uh I dropped the Hall of Rights here. Hall of Rights I had oh I'm sorry, I didn't drop the Hall of Rights. I dropped uh I dropped the Skitari Protector. And I went with the Subjugator Titan. I also had a Thedarian on there. I dropped that in place of a, a second Eudicia squad. You're going to want to flank against Dark Angels and against Defenders of Caliban. You're going to want to flank against Canis if you can, but also get that Cleave 10 in there. If I can get Subjugator Titan on, his hard removal options are low, right? He has a 7 cost, like with the... With, with, uh, Astalin, he can use irresistible charisma at eight energy, hit me with it, and then destroy it with his ability. So that's at eight. Dark Angels at seven energy have got their hard removal, and Canis Vertex doesn't have hard removal. So long as I can stay up on that and get some of these high guys out this time around, I'll be feeling okay gotta happen though if i don't get them out that's not gonna do me any good so we're gonna see uh we're gonna see what we can do that's with saul um i kept the other two decks roughly the same because i think they're pretty consistent it's gonna be tight but that's the whole point if he goes on to win then he will face j thrills or i'll face j thrills j thrills is the next opponent in the losers bracket and we'll see where we go from there so let's see if he's ready and have him send it to me. See if we can make this work. There we go. There we go. Okay. All right. Uh, da, 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 da. I want Duke out there, but I need a good starting hand. I don't like any of those fantastically. All right. We'll go with it. This is bad. This is bad, guys. This is a bad starting hand. Starting in. Not looking great. Okay. On the plus side, I've got this tactic, so that'll buy me some turn. That's interesting he went that route. So hopefully I can get some better cards. Because I kind of need those. Oh. Wow. Okay, well, I've got a flanker, so if he puts something out, I can flank it. I can draw a card. Okay. Okay. All right. Um. Hmm. Oh. Don't mind if I do. Let's go ahead and throw you up. You can get some more guys back. That's fine. Get body on the board. Got the options now. We might be cooking with gas. We might be cooking with gas now. Mm hmm Yeah. Okay. Okay. That's not going to give me anything this turn. But if he's putting pressure on these guys, he's not getting rid of the Hall of Rights. I can do more with the Hall of Rights. Not ideal. It's something. Interesting he went that way. Because that's not going to let him attack this turn. Hmm? Yep. See, he, he gambled. He gambled and he lost. Okay, I can't bring this out yet. I can bring that out next turn. Let's go ahead and bring out what we can. Deal with that. Deal with that. We'll save Subjugator Titan is coming out next turn. He won't be able to use his uh, irresistible charisma until eight energy, which gives me a turn with the Titan, right? And that could be all the turn that I need. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. 
Ooh, or do I do protocols? Nah. When you flex, you flex big. You gotta do what you gotta do. This is what I'm doing, boys and girls. That's all there is to it. If he wants to steal it and hit me for 10, he's gonna steal and hit me for 10. I'll get it back on my turn. Otherwise, he's gonna have to take 10. And I've got that forbidden protocols. And quite frankly, that, oh, he's dumping everything into it. Fantastic. I'm okay with that too. I am okay with that too, because I can follow it up on my next turn with Duke and Adobe Car. Cost him three cards to get rid of the one. It was a very important card for him to get rid of, but I've got more things to go, so I'm all right. I'm feeling okay about that. I've got seven on the board, nine with Saul. Do the squad and yes, perfect. That's what I want right there. Okay, so this here is not gonna, I'm not gonna worry, I'm not worried about that. Return to hand, that is that. Okay, let's go ahead, return you to hand. Pump him up. And let's keep the pressure on while we can. We've got more bodies that he can do damage with. He can't Melgator, his Heart of Caliban is gonna be able to take out Three guys, he might be able to get rid of one. Got to do damage on my next turn though. Nah, see. He's gambling at this point. That's not gonna do it for him. Alright, alright. Feeling good. Feeling good. We got this. We got this in the bag. Alright, then we got ten, we got thirteen, we got fifteen. That's good game. Okay, that's one. That's one. So we're going up with Astlin. Do we do Corswain? We do Corswain. Let's do it. All right. Wish me luck, everybody, with Corswain. Now, Corswain is kind of my mid, mid ground. He can do a few different things here. Um, Eschaton Imperative can be very, very valuable. The flanking troops. That they've got the direct damage as well as the lethal range of course swing but it's really going to be tricky right the important part is getting troops on the board high initiative will serve me well over all of his warlords i'm not worried about that I'm not worried about the the initiative part that'll give me the first go so if i can get an operator to core fantastic if i don't and I'm able to follow it up at least on the second turn with Pelagor. I might stand a chance. The uh, the duplicitous from from Astalin, that's a problem. So that's why Eschaton Imperative is so important. All right, let's do this. Wish me luck. Oh, we're doing Canis. Yikes. Okay. Alright, we're doing Canis. So if he wins with Canis, then I'll have to face... Mm. This is not a great hand. Wow. Oh boy. Wow, this is not good. Alright. A troop within the 2 to 4 range would be ideal. This is not giving me anything. More than likely, I'm expecting a desperate defense build. Maybe not. Maybe not. Hey, look, this will help. I'll get a troop out. Oh, boy. Wow. Well, on the plus side, there's Astravel, so I can get him out of five energy. He's going to draw heat. I'm not really going to get his battle honor off, but if, he, if I've got some Astartes out there that he can bolster, that's great. If, if I get them out, right? 
Okay, let's get. Gonna need that. I have a feeling I'm gonna need that this game. What's he going to play? He's playing a troop. Very interesting. Okay. Okay, well that's good for me. He didn't ready anything here. I hate to do this, but I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. Because I want my battle honor, but really with that and one of these fists, he can take Astravel out and it doesn't cost him anything. Instead, I want to throw off his whole game plan. This is a random chance for him. So now he's going to have to start eating some damage. It's not ideal. Take four to, four to his weapons. Sure. Now we're talking. Now we're cooking with gas. Right, let's keep it up. He should have probably taken the four, ready these guys. But... I don't know, it's been a long time since I've played Canis, so I can't tell what he's got in his deck. I'm not sure what his strategy is here or not, if he's just going to go high damage or he's going to hope to get to 10. So I've got to take out whatever I can in the meantime. Yeah, that's a sound strategy. Okay. Fair enough. Fair enough. You know what? Fair enough. Alright, so he's got both weapons tanked. Let's go. Let's go troops. Let's go. Target of an enemy attack. Let's go into face. I would gotta get him down though. Because if he starts throwing out front lines, ugh, I've got some cards to deal with it. Not it. Okay. So no tactic there. Okay. Well, on the plus side, let's go ahead and do this. Oh, I don't have that, do I? Alright, alright, alright. I want to do this right now, but I'll hold off on it. And we'll just do damage while we can. And let's go ahead and stun this weapon here. Okay, we're, we're drawing it closer. We've got some damage in hand. Got some damage in hand, especially with that Orders from Terra that really doubles our lethal range. I hated having to use his Duelist. And at the same time, I feel like that I had to. He doesn't have anything here. This is it. This is game. Oh, I don't know if he meant to do that or not. Good game. Good game, sir. Alright, good game. Well, see if that goes. That's not loading. <laughs> this has been really buggy with Mando. It's been really buggy on the replays or the, the matchings. All right, well, hold it out that one, guys. So we'll see. I face J Thrills then in, next up in the loser's bracket. Take a look and see what he's playing when we can play next and we'll do a, do a video when that time comes j thrills always have some good games against him in barnet legions so i'm curious to see what he's bringing to the forefront for tournament play we'll break it down probably we'll give it a little bit more thought in terms of how we're going to be matching up because i expect he's going to be challenging i think all the guys are in the bracket at the in the 
format i think for the most part all have some uh some pedigree to them so whichever way it goes team usa is going to have some good players and i'm looking forward to at least getting one more round in come on come on give it to me so all right guys thank you for watching thank you for your good vibes whether you knew it or not from the future you sent them to me in the past and it helped out i really appreciate it <laughs> until next time keep playing legions we'll talk to you later